talk of giants once roaming the earth is bound to ferment passionate discussion between those who believe it and those who think it's a myth but according to the evidence there's a lot more truth in this than mainstream history suggests Genesis chapter 6 tells us there were giants in the earth in those days and afterwards the pre-flood world gave the ideal conditions for long life and huge growth which we also know from the dinosaur plant insect and other fossils but what about humans would they too continue to grow very large let's look at the evidence Ron Wyatt on one of his first trips to the ark site discovered Noah's house and the grave of his wife mrs. Noah he claims the sarcophagus was 18 feet tall now when we hear this we think it to be incredulous but is it really what would we expect a 900 year old person to look like who lived in a much better environment than ours would we expect them to be exactly like us or different and the Bible says there were giants in those days this article dated December 20th 1897 in the New York Times talks about an amazing discovery in Maple Creek Wisconsin one of the three recently discovered mounds in this town has been opened in it was found the skeleton of a man of gigantic size the bones measured from head to foot over nine feet and were in a fair state of preservation the skull was as large as a half bushel measure some finely tempered rods of copper and other relics were lying near the bones the mound from which these relics were taken is 10 feet high and 30 feet long and varies from 6 to 8 feet in width the two mounds of lesser size will be excavated soon another article from the New York Times on February 8 1890 states for over a week past crowds have been looking to the site of the unearthed Indian graveyard near Edgewater Avenue in Pleasantville the first report of skeletons on earth was about 1,000 yards from the city post office and on earth eight bodies closely laid together in a deep chamber snugly packed in with tortoise oyster and clamshell decorations which together with its extreme height points to the fact that it must have been the powerful old chief Kiniwalga whose descendants still own farms along the shore professor C H Farrell of Baltimore Charles K Simpson of New York John H. Cooley Jr. of New Haven, Connecticut, and several gentlemen from the University of Pennsylvania immediately went to the scene. Mr. Risley and Farr, the owners of the land, gave to the Archaeological Association of the University of Pennsylvania the right to search for relics on their land. These researchers have been watched by thousands of people with great interest. Besides weapons of war, savage ornamental war stones and over 50 skeletons are to be shipped to the university at once they run in size from a small child to several of seven feet in height about 50 students were upon the ground this morning and continued their research until stopped by rain the citizens gaze in silent wonder on these relics of a race that at one time ruled the land for seven miles along the shore can be seen large mounds of clam and oyster shells left here by Indians who used to congregate by hundreds to open oysters for winter food and it's here that those shell mounds that the great number of skeletons have been taken up in some instances weapons of war made of stone and flint have been found lying close behind some exceedingly large skeletons the relics will be put on exhibition at the Museum of the University in Philadelphia in this New York Times article published September 8 1871 the state of Virginia puts in a claim to be in possession of a cave full of dead Indians the Pittsburgh index giving the tale as quoted here the workmen engaged in opening a way for the projected railroad between Weldon and Garysburg struck Monday about one mile from the former place in a bank beside the river a catacomb of skeletons supposed to be those of Indians five of a remote age and a lost and forgotten race the bodies exhumed were of strange and remarkable formation the skulls were nearly an inch in thickness the teeth were field sharp and are those of cannibals the enamel perfectly preserved the bones were of a wonderful length and strength the femur being as long as the leg of an ordinary man the stature of the body being probably as great as eight or nine feet near their heads were sharp stone arrows stone mortars in which their corn was braided 
and the bowls of pipes apparently of soft amiable soapstone the teeth of the skeletons are said to be as large as those of horses one of them has been brought to the city and presented to an officer of the Pittsburgh Railroad the bodies were found closely packed together laid thereon as it there was no discernible in regression or out of the mound Katona New York September 6 1904 reads while a gang of men in the employment of the New York and Harlem Railroad were taking sand from an immense mound near Purdy Station today to fill in an excavation, they unearthed several skeletons of unusual size. The bones are believed to be those of Indians who once lived in this vicinity and belonged to a tribe that was led by the great chief Ticas, from whom the Titicas Valley, now part of New York watershed, takes its name. Besides finding the bones, the workmen also exhumed a score of more arrowheads, hatchets, and copper implements. It's believed that the large mound in which the relics were found was once the burying ground of the Ticas Indians. The last Indians were seen in the valley a short time after the Revolutionary War. The bones found today were brought to Katona and will be interred in the local cemetery. On March 5, 1894, Farmer Warren Cohen of Hillsboro found several ancient graves. They were situated upon a high point of land in Highland Country, Ohio, about a mile from the famous Serpent Mound, where Professor Putnam of Harvard made interesting discoveries. The graves were made of large limestone slabs, two and a half to three feet in length and a foot wide. These were set on edge about a foot apart. Similar slabs covered the graves. A single one somewhat larger was at the head and another at the foot. The top of the graves was two feet below the present surface. Upon opening one of the graves, a skeleton upwards of six feet in length was brought to light. There were a number of stone hatchets, beads, and ornaments of peculiar workmanship near the right arm. Several large flint spear and arrowheads among the ribs gave evidence that the warrior had died in battle. In another grave was the skeleton of a man equally large. The right leg had been broken during life and the bones had grown together a protuberance at the point of union was as large as an egg and the limb was bent like a bow at the feet lay a skull of some enemy or slave several pipes and pendants were near the shoulders in the other graves Cohen made equally interesting finds it seems that this region was populated by a fairly intelligent people and that the serpent mound was an object of worship Near the graves is a large field in which broken fragments of potter and burned stones give evidence of a prehistoric village site. In November 20th, 1883, Professor Norris, the ethnologist who has been examining the mounds in this section of West Virginia for several months the other day, opened the big mound on Colonel B. H. Smith's farm, six or eight miles below here. This is the largest mound in the valley and proved a rich storehouse. The mound is 50 feet high and they dug down to the bottom. It was evidently the burial place of a noted chief who had been interred with unusual honors. At the bottom they found the bones of a human being measuring 7 feet in length and 19 inches across at the shoulders. He was lying at and at either side lying at an angle of about 45 degrees with their feet pointed toward their chief were other men, on one side two and on the other three. At the head of the chief lay another man with his hands extended before him and bearing two bracelets of copper. On each side of the chief's wrists were six copper bracelets, while a looking glass of mica lay at his shoulder and copper rested on his breast. Four copper bracelets were under his head and an arrow at the center. Housed 12 feet in diameter and 10 feet high with a ridge pole, one foot in diameter had been erected over them and the hole covered by the dirt that formed the mound. Each of the men buried there had been enclosed in a bark coffin. February 11, 1902 According to this article, owing to the discovery of the remains of a race of giants in Guadalupe, New Mexico, antiquarians and archaeologists are preparing an expedition further to explore that region. This determination is based on the excitement that exists among the people of a scope of country near Mesa Rico, about 200 miles southeast of Las Vegas, 
where an old burial ground has been discovered that has yielded skeletons of enormous size. Luciana Quintana, on whose ranch the ancient burial plot is located, discovered two stones that bore curious inscriptions, and beneath these were found in shallow excavations the bones of a frame that could not have been less than 12 feet in length. The men who opened the grave say the forearm was four feet long, and that in a well-preserved jaw the lower teeth ranged from the size of a hickory nut to that of the largest walnut in size. The chest of the being is reported as having a circumference of seven feet. Quintana, who has discovered many other burial places, expresses the opinion that perhaps thousands of skeletons of a race of giants long extinct will be found. This supposition is based on the traditions handed down from the early Spanish invasion that have detailed knowledge of the existence of a race of giants that inhabited the plains of what is now eastern New Mexico. Indian legends and carvings also in the same section indicate the existence of such a race. In St. Paul, Minnesota, on May 24, 1882, wrote, A skull of heroic size and singular formation has been discovered among the relics of the mound builders in the Red River Valley. The mound was 60 feet in diameter and 12 feet high. Near the enter were found the bones of about a dozen men and women, mixed with the bones of various animals. The skull in question was the only perfect one, and near it were found some abnormally large body bones. The man who bore it was evidently a giant. A thorough investigation of the mound and its contents will be made by the Historical Society. The New York Times, again December 25, 1868. Another strange find was discovered day before yesterday while quarrymen employed by the Sank Rapids Water Power Company were engaged in quarrying rock for the dam which is being erected across the Mississippi. At this place, found embedded in the solid granite rock, the remains of a human being of gigantic status. About seven feet below the surface of the ground and about three feet and a half above the upper ground, the remains were found embedded in the sand which had evidently been placed in the quadrangular grave which had been dug out of the solid rock to receive the last remains of the antediluvian giant. The grave was 12 feet in length, 4 feet wide, and about 3 feet in depth. The remains are completely petrified and are of gigantic dimensions. The head is massive, measuring 31 and a half inches in circumference and very flat on top. The femur measures 26 and a quarter inches, while the body is equally long in proportion. From the crown of the head to the sole of the foot, the length is 10 feet 9 and a half inches. The measures around the chest 39 and a half inches. The giant must have weighed at least 900 pounds when covered with a reasonable amount of flesh. The petrified remains, and there is nothing left but the naked bones now, weigh 304 and a quarter pounds. The thumb and fingers of the left hand and the left foot from the ankle to the toes are gone, but all the other parts are perfect. In Binghamton, July 14, 1916, a report reads, Professor A. B. Skinner of the American Indian Museum, Professor W. K. Moorhead of Phillips, and Over Academy and Dr. George Donahue, Pennsylvania State Historian, have been conducting researches along the valley of the Susquehanna. They've uncovered an Indian mound at Tioga Point on the upper portion of Queen Esther's Flats. On what is known as the Murray Farm, a short distance from Sayre, Pennsylvania, which promises rich additions to Indian lore. In the mound uncovered were found the bones of 68 men which are believed to have been buried 700 years ago. The average height of these men was 7 feet, while many were much taller. Further evidence of their gigantic size was found in large Celts or axes hewed from stones and buried in the grave. On some of the skulls, two inches above the perfectly formed forehead, were protuberances of bone. Members of the expedition say that it's the first discovery of its kind on record and a valuable contribution to the history of the early races. The skull and a few bones found in one grave were sent to the American Indian Museum. Another report from Centerburg, Ohio, on May 4, 1885. 
Licking County has been for years a favorite field for students of Indian history there being here two old forts and scores of mounds near Homer was opened by some schoolboys who found a skeleton Today further research was made and several feet below the surface of the earth in a large vault with stone floor and bark covering were found four huge skeletons Three being each over seven feet in length and the other eight The skeletons lay with their feet to the east on a bed of charcoal in which were numerous partially burned bones About the neck of the largest skeleton were a lot of stone beads evidently a necklace in life the grave contained about 80 stone vessels and implements the most striking being a curiously wrought pipe the bowl having a series of carved figures upon it representing a contest between animals and birds it's said to be the only engraved stone pipe ever found a stone kettle holding about a gallon in which was a residue of saline matter bears evidence of much kill their bows a number of arrows stone hatchets and a stone knife are among the implements the knife is of peculiar shape with a curved blade and wooden handle Students of Indian archaeology claim. It's the most valuable find ever made in that line Madison, Wisconsin May 3rd 1912 the New York Times are an article the discovery of several skeletons of human beings while excavating a mound at Lake Delavan Indicates that a heretofore unknown race of men once inhabited southern Wisconsin Information of the discovery was brought to Madison today by Maurice Morrissey of Delavan who came here to attend a meeting of the Republican State Central Committee Curator Charles E. Brown of the State Historical Museum will investigate the discoveries within a few days upon opening one large mound at Lake Lawn Farm 18 skeletons were discovered by the Phillips brothers the heads presumably those of men are much larger than the heads of any race which inhabits America today From directly over the eye sockets the heads slope straight back and the nasal bones protrude far above the cheekbones The jaw bones are long and pointed bearing a minute resemblance to the head of a monkey The teeth in the front of the jaw are regular molars there were also found in the mounds the skeletons presumably of women which had smaller heads but were similar in facial characteristics the skeletons were embedded in charcoal and covered over with layers of baked clay to shed water from the sepulcher legends of giants exist in Mexico in a place called Teotihuacan named by the Aztecs who discovered it more than a thousand years after its decline the name translates as city of the gods or the place where men become gods it must have been awe-inspiring to behold so when Hernan Cortes and his men conquered the Aztecs in the 16th century they asked who had built such a colossal city the Aztecs replied we were not the builders of Teotihuacan the city was built by the Quinan Atzin a race of giants who came from heavens in the times of the second sun Baalbek Baalbek's first city was built before the great flood by Cain the son of Adam whom God banished to the land of Nod that lay east of Eden for murdering his good brother Abel and he called it after his son Enoch the citadel they say fell into ruins at the time of the deluge and was much later rebuilt by a race of giants under the command of Nimrod the mighty hunter and king of Shinar of the book of Genesis so is it possible that Nephilim or a lost race of giants built this site? Saxihuman Nobody knows exactly who had built Saxihuman when and most importantly how Saxihuman can be admired mostly for the remarkable architectural engineering skills that were needed for its creation the Incas told the Spaniards that they weren't the ones who built Saxihuman but the Giants in their mythology there were huge people living in the Cusco area and they carried the huge stone blocks and put them together the city of Cusco was built in the shape of a puma a holy animal in the Inca beliefs the head of the puma was actually Saxihuman Stonehenge 
Some people believe that the Nephilim, a race of giants who were almost totally wiped out by Noah's flood, used their greater height and strength to help build Stonehenge. A 12th century illustration from Brute shows a giant helping Merlin build Stonehenge. In 1901, in the world's history, a survey of man's record, Han Ferdinand Hemholtz and James Bryce wrote, for the erection of these in their present position without the technical resources at the disposal of modern builders human strength appears inadequate in popular opinion only giants could have made such structures Nan Madal Did giants build Nan Madal and then mysteriously vanish the Ponpai people believe them to be the natives of the vanished continent of Mu sunk into the Pacific Ocean during a great calamity 12,000 years ago Myths have evolved over time about the tenants of Nan Madal and three distinct races of giants a human-like species capable of flight a Simian race of giants who could fly and live under the sea and a third strain of mega giants best described as worker drones who labored beneath the sea in the early 1900s researchers recorded a popular legend about the Kona a cannibalistic race of giants Kodu Vecchio is a giant's grave in Sardinia which was built during the Bronze Age 3300 to 700 BC it's believed that it was built by the Nuragic civilization and it was used by the Nuragic people as a public tomb According to legend giants were buried in this tomb due to the massive size of some of the stones used Is this just a legend? No regular sized people have ever been discovered in the tombs Malta Island of the Giants when the exploration of these sites began many centuries ago the excavators lived under the impression that they were erected by an extinct race of giants in antediluvian times as is in evidence in printed account of the Maltese islands published in Leon in 1536 written by Jean Quintin d'Autun who was auditor to Grand Master Philippe Villiers de Lille Adam most of the excavation work nonetheless was carried out from the 19th century onwards the first occurring in 1816 to 1826 at the temple complex at Gozo's Gantia a site meaning giants place reflecting the popular connotations these sites possessed Gobekli Tepe having been dated to around 9000 BC Gobekli Tepe is thought to be the oldest construction project known and this doesn't make much sense because conventional knowledge has always been that humans didn't start building things until after we learned how to farm Given that excavations turned up a whole lot of bones at the site probably from animal sacrifices Archaeologists are pretty sure that it was a religious site which seems to indicate that it was religion not agriculture that first inspired people to build this structure as some suggest to worship their Nephilim gods Today on Guam, many people tell tales of Tautamo Na, or the first people. Described as huge with hairy arms and ferns growing out of holes in the side of their head. Other Tautamo Na have no head, are huge in stature. Seen sometimes in unnatural but seemingly well kept clearings in a dense jungle, there are many stories of the Tautamo Na and the ancient Chamorros who as children could rip out coconut trees like young Taga or Gadao or Malaguana or Mataguana who could split a boat in half by rowing the opposite way who were these giants giant footprints South Africa this is the most spectacular footprint in rock found anywhere on earth to date there are others but none are as fully formed and obvious as this one discovered in 1931 by a farmer called Stoffel Kotze while hunting it has remained one of the most controversial sites in archaeology and geological research mainly because we know so little about the true nature of our reality and simple facts about geology Goliath the famous giant slain by the later King David was about 12 feet 3.66 meters tall he was one of the last giants the Anakim another one was Og these giants were the offspring of the sons of God 
and the daughters of men as cited in Genesis 6 4 also Goliath according to the Bible had six fingers and six toes King David and his men had many encounters with giants on the battlefield both of Goliath's family and from Egypt number two Rolf the Walker Rolf the Walker later known as Rollo was a Norwegian Viking he was a giant so tall that no horse could carry him Ganger Rolf was outlawed by Norway by the tyrant King Harald Harfarger and left the country with his men he then in 885 captured the city of Paris with a fleet of 700 Viking ships and later became the ruler of Normandy the earls in Normandy are descendant from Rollo and consequently so are all English kings the Sumerian culture might be the oldest in the world where civilization was born you can still find Sumerian statues and carvings showing their gods and kings with six fingers their gods taught them everything even mathematics based on the six digits system no wonder since they had six fingers the Sumerians believed that their gods came from stars the Pleiades numerous Sumerian seals depict them as men of gigantic stature they're often taller than members of their courts even when depicted seated on thrones in the numerous seals that show them standing they tower above those standing next to them according to an engineer that lived in the Middle East from 1938 to 1968 in southeast Turkey in the Euphrates Valley and in Homs and at Iran Zora tombs of about four meters long once existed but new roads and other construction work has destroyed the spots at two places when unearthed because of construction work the leg bones were measured about 120 centimeters a model of one of the bones found can be seen at Mount Blanco fossil museum sculpted by Joe Taylor the sculpture is mounted over a drawing to scale to show how large this person was 12 to 14 feet the kings of ancient Egypt were often said to be giants the King Kasa Kamui 2690 BC was the final ruler of the second dynasty he was five cubits and three palms high about eight feet or 2.44 meters if the cubit of 17.4 inches were used if we use the royal cubit his height increases to 14 feet 7 inches or 4.45 meters Prometheus was one of the Titans a group of semi divine beings in the Greek myths that rebelled against the gods Prometheus one of the leaders of the rebellion stole the secret of fire from Zeus and gave it to mankind as part of his punishment Zeus chained Prometheus to the Caucasus Mountains where he remains to this day Prometheus was also closely involved with the creation of man and recognized as the pioneer of civilization the Titans were giants the famous Pharaoh Ramses II was a real giant of his time he was not as tall as the Giants described in the Bible and other scriptures but at two meters he was a half meter taller than the average person in Egypt examinations of his mummy showed that he had blonde hair he also lived much longer than most people he was about 90 years old when he died there is a lore which claims that King Arthur piloted an ark during the deluge and this legend also relates that he stood just over nine feet tall King Henry II inspired by stories that Arthur was buried at Glastonbury dispatched a team there to excavate the area at a depth of nine feet they found a lead cross inscribed with the words here lies the body of King Arthur 16 feet below that was a stone sarcophagus containing the bones of a man nine feet tall Cuculain is called the Irish Hercules and according to the legends came to Ireland in a ship when his homeland was destroyed by a flood Interestingly, he seems to equate with the South American white god Kukul Khan a figure of very tall stature Who arrived on a boat telling much the same story? Hercules in the Greek and Roman mythology was one of the Titans giants He carried the world upon his shoulders and is said to have piloted an ark at Agadir in Morocco reports Peter Colosimo the French captain Lafana chair discovered a complete arsenal of hunting weapons including 500 double-edged axes 
weighing 17 and a half pounds in other words 20 times as heavy as would be convenient for modern man apart from the question of weight to handle the axe at all one would need to have hands of a size approximate to a giant with a stature of at least 13 feet the giant Cheng Wu Gao showed himself in England in 1865 1866 at the old Egyptian Hall in Piccadilly a courtly gentleman and able scholar he was invited to visit the Prince and Princess of Wales he stood 8 feet 2 inches he was not the tallest in his family however for one sister measured 8 feet 4 inches the historian Augustus has it that Maximus was 8 foot 6 inches 2.6 meters tall and so strong that he could pull laden carts unaided the size of his footwear was also legendary and the expression Maximus's boot came to be used in popular parlance for any tall or lanky individual so we have looked at the evidence of both oral and written records as well as artifacts bones and skeletons that substantiate the existence of those real giants now it's up to you to decide did giants really walk the earth in the distant past